Good day YouTube and welcome back. All right, Monday afternoon here in Australia, markets up ever so slightly, but really just again traveling kind of sideways. We're really holding around that kind of two point two ish trillion dollar mark. You know, we get up to two point three, we drop just below two point two. And again, we're just waiting to see what happens. You know, is the market gonna hold and maybe travel sideways from here? Or are we ready to start moving up or moving down? <laughs> I know there's you know, there's only a couple of ways we can really go, and that's the three of them. We can't go backwards. But yeah, it's just there's a lot of indecision at the moment. Again, you know, the new year's over has all that tax loss harvesting that has been alleged to have been around. Is that now over and done with? Is the market stable enough to hold these prices considering the rumor is that we don't really have much retail here again there is some retail there's always some you're never really going to have no retail but we just don't have a lot of FOMO or well, not so much FOMO because FOMO is different that's when you get the blow off tops but the retail have just moved on you know some of them probably got burnt unfortunately buying in at you know 60,000 and they've you know gotten out when it started to get down into the 50,000s and definitely when it started to get into the 40s uh, and they won't come back for a while. That's what happens every time with this market. Uh, you know, it is what it is. And again, the rumor is at the moment that it's just, not just, but mainly uh, the institutions playing at the moment. So, yeah, and look, my, my opinion is I don't know what's going on <laughs> in regards to that. I mean, I'm here, so there's definitely some retail here. You know, if you're watching my channel, you're probably retail. So you're here. But again, as I've said, you know, I, I got myself a better cash position and I'm not doing anything too crazy at the moment. Bought a couple of coins yesterday, really some kind of metaverse sort of gaming plays is really what I put a few dollars into and not a whole lot. It was a very small amount. Other than that, I'm just, yeah, I'm keeping the cash on the side waiting to see what happens. Because if the market takes off, awesome. Like I've said, I've got my bags packed. And if it does take a big dump, look at cash on the side and I will just keep an eye on the market. And again, just start to put a few dollars into things when they get to prices uh, that I like. And again, I like to buy anything at a discount. So if I see a project and it's something that I've been in and it suddenly gets to a price that looks all right, I'll throw a few dollars at it. All right, but I've already said that. I got onto that pretty much every video. So let's move on and have a look at the market. Bitcoin dominance now up to 38%. So it is dropping. So people are getting a little bit more bullish on the altcoins. We do see some volume now. So three point, uh, sorry, $306 billion. So up ever so slightly. And like I said, Bitcoin trading just under 47000 So, you know, can it hold? And ETH gas price has risen ever so slightly. All right, market is up half a percent in the last 24 hours. So what's performed well? Well, there we go. Never heard of this jewel, DeFi Kingdoms, up 18%. Uh, don't know enough about it to want to do anything with it. And, you know, again, a lot of the DeFi projects I'm just very skeptical of, except for the older ones that have been around and have got some history. I don't know anything about that, so I wouldn't be personally chasing that. That's not to say it's not a good project. Maybe it's on its way to being a really good project. You earn finance up ever so slightly, but what are we seeing and I've been talking about? DeFi seems to be doing well. There we go. Uniswap making a move, doing well. So DeFi, like I said, don't go to sleep on it. Aave down there starting to make some moves, but they go up a little bit and then they go down a little bit. Again, we're still waiting to see if there's going to be some kind of breakout either way. But we got some nice uh, upside considering the market overall is only up half a percent. And then the downside is Kadena obviously continues to go down. Xfin, Arweave, Curve down a little bit but the losses are pretty small. Not even one double digit loss in the entire top 100. So again, to be kind of expected with a sideways market. All right, let's move on to Bitcoin. So what we can see here, like I said, this is what I think could happen. Again, not saying it is happening and I'm never offering financial advice, but what we can see is we got this and I said, what would be nice is if we bounced on the outside, maybe even a couple of times and then pushed offwards. And so we'll kind of zoom in, we'll have a look exactly what's happened. So we broke out, we fell back down in, now we've come back out again. And now look what we're doing. We're bouncing on this trend line. So this downwards falling wedge. And like I said, these are generally bullish patterns. We've had them here. This is a downwards falling wedge. Boom, big move. This is a downwards falling wedge right here. Boom, big move. Again, same here. Downwards falling wedge. Boom, big move. Now they don't always make big moves like this. But in a bull market, which most of us think we're still in, this is generally bullish. So again, is this now getting ready? 
to bounce off here and hopefully break some new all-time highs or could it maybe roll over again and if it does roll over again I'm really not too worried as long as it stays on the outside of these lines but that doesn't mean it can't be bearish and it can't continue to go much much lower but at the moment again everything's just waiting but what's interesting is this level here seems to be holding really well kind of what is it the 40 let's just round it down forty six thousand dollars that really has been a level of support it's going to be not great if it doesn't hold I think we'll pretty quickly go down to 42,000 I actually think it'll be quite quick but we could just kind of bounce around here for a while and again you know slowly start to make our way up and it could take months it's the first thing of the month you know everyone's on holidays and celebrating and things like that so they haven't come back and really got into uh, the investors mindset just yet that's generally how it works early in the year things are quiet and they've slowed down after New Year's and Christmas and all those kind of things so we're gonna have to wait and see what this does do we just get a lot of sideways chop maybe come down a level and then start to chop sideways before we start to make our move back up that's what I would kind of be thinking that we're either going to move sideways and then move back up or we're going to come down to this next level and then finally start to make our move back up but hey like I said I never offer financial advice and I've been wrong before this could just simply go rightio today's the day and we're going back up and look that will be great that's what I am hoping for it's just not what I think is coming just yet there's not enough uh, momentum and things happening in the market I my personal opinion is we probably have to wait till about sort of February March before we start to see big moves and look we might have to come down to here all right just a couple of stories I want to focus on because there's not a lot again in this time of the year but Eminem buys a Bored Ape Yacht Club Ethereum for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars whoo I mean Eminem's got plenty of money 450,000 is not going to be a lot but that is a lot of money to put on an uh, NFT but you know some of those NFTs particularly crypt crypto punks and board ape yacht clubs that is you know just yeah wow what a lot of money I mean I, I suppose if I had you know probably hundreds of millions of dollars like Eminem does I would buy something for 450,000 an NFT excuse me an NFT for 450,000 but as I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars, I just, yeah, I couldn't put that kind of money on an NFT, not sure where it's going. But that'd be more like me putting, you know, maybe three or four hundred dollars into an NFT or, you know, five hundred dollars or maybe even possibly a thousand dollars into an NFT. A bit of money, but not, you know, exactly going to uh, break the bank and then just leaving it to see what happens. Now, I've only bought one NFT, well, I bought three NFTs and I think it cost me a hundred and something dollars two hundred dollars for all three and they were the crazy skulls and I haven't bought any other NFTs I just wanted to get into the space and explore and see what it's like uh, I'm not even sure what the prices for those are anymore but there you can you can see right there NFTs they're still selling for you know they seem like a premium at the moment but maybe in the long term that's actually quite cheap so we'll wait and see now because it's the new year and there's not a lot of you know news that's going to come out for a I reckon till about kind of February it's not that we won't get any but again people are generally on holidays for January and things like that come back around February and slowly start to get back into the investing space you got to ask yourself you know where do you want to be at the moment and with all the talks about inflation coming and all that kind of stuff you know where should you have your money should you be in cash should you be completely out of cash should you be in crypto should you be in stocks more billionaires turning to crypto on fiat inflation fears they are the smart money now don't get me wrong anyone who tells you you don't want to have any fiat I won't say they're wrong because again I'm not a financial advisor but if you've got no fiat you can never buy the dip I think you should always be putting away some of you know if you particularly if you're dollar cost averaging my kind of rule is I want to have around about 10 to 20 percent cash so 20 percent of my DCA goes into cash it just simply stays on the side I might take 50% of that cash and put it into stable coins and then put it somewhere to try and earn some yield and that's a might I do have some stable coins earning some yield but not a whole lot and then the other 80% that I have of my DCA again then I break up into the cryptos that I want but I'm not always buying every week except for Bitcoin or every fortnight whatever it is when the money comes in I'm always buying that and it's always going to be around about 30% if Bitcoin is at a discount if Bitcoin is at an all-time high then I start to put in less anything that's at all-time highs 
I'm generally putting less in and having more cash sitting on the side because I want to buy more of them on the dips. So that's what I'm doing. But here, the billionaires are turning to crypto over fiat. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not getting rid of all their fiat. They 100% are not doing that. They're just not keeping a lot in cash because of uh, inflation. And like I said, 20% uh, cash is a fair amount and is more than I'd want to have in cash except for I'm, I am spending it, I'm just waiting for the dips. But I want to have a minimum of 10% at all times, just in case I'm wrong about the dips and they continue to go lower, then I have that money. And you know, again, I get the feeling like a period of deflation is going to come where cash will be the better option, but it's just not going to last forever. That's my personal opinion. Again, never financial advice. They may taper off you know, printing money quite heavily for some stage, but they will never just outright stop it for any great length of time. They simply can't. The system doesn't work like that. Hence why you want to put your money into things that will appreciate, and cash does not appreciate. It depreciates over uh, over time. But there may be periods of time where it goes, you know, where it goes sort of up. But again, it just won't last. Personal opinion. All right. Next one. Crypto needs centralized systems to integrate with traditional finance, says CZ. And I completely agree. For crypto to really take off, we need it to be held by banks and things like that. And I know we don't want banks and all the rest of it. But for that mainstream adoption, that is what's needed. We're you know, still probably maybe a generation away, i.e. our children will be the ones that probably won't need banks. But you know, most of us... Uh, not so much people who are watching this and understand crypto, but again, all your friends that don't understand it, it'd just be too much for them at first. They're going to go to banks. And if they go to a bank and the bank goes from, hey, you know how we could offer you 0.025% interest before? Well, now we've gone up to 4%. People are going to lap that up and think it's absolutely amazing. They've gone from basically no interest whatsoever to 4%. They're going to think it's the best thing ever. Unfortunately, little do they know that you can actually get more from other places. But again, we've still got regulation coming that may knock a whole stack of that sort of, you know, interest on the head. We've got to wait and see where that is. But we, you know, again, the rumors are that traditional finance are going to use decentralized finance and, you know, ARC. Well, yeah, that's what it's called now. I was going to say Aave Pro, but Aave Arc is one that allegedly some banks are going to use. There already is a Serba Bank, a Ciba Bank, I should say, that have got on the whitelist, but that's not completely rolled out yet. But I do think that is the way of the future, whether it's Aave or some other program that will come out. And that is what's going to happen. DeFi is going to be the backbone of what is traditional finance. And traditional finance will, again, change. But again, that's uh, what I see. And without you know, those centralized organizations, i.e. traditional finance, banks and things like that, we just won't get the mainstream. But eventually the mainstream will catch on to, hey, I can get 4% from my bank. But if I go do this myself and I learn how to do it, I can maybe get 5 or 6% or maybe even 10%. And eventually that's the way everyone will go. But don't get me wrong, I do think there's going to be regulation that's going to come and try and put a stop to that. But they can't put a stop to decentralized finance. They really can't. It's just the way it sort of operates and people being able to use it, i.e. maybe not through a bank. Uh, those are the regulations that I think might come, that they will allow decentralized finance but you know, probably put in there somewhere that you know, people can only use it through banks. The only people that can use uh, decentralized finance, they'll be accredited investors and things like that. That is unfortunately what I think may be coming and that won't be great for the space, but it still is good for the space because it's still being used. It just means there's another middleman again that is gonna you know, make money well, for not doing a whole lot, which is you know, <laughs> what banks have done a bit of it's not to say that banks don't do anything they provide loans and things like that but there's a lot of other places that are middle men where money literally comes into them and then goes out and they take a percentage for not doing a whole lot and the whole point of decentralized finance is we got programs that do that and they don't take that kind of percentage gains from you all right moving on last story biggest ethereum whales loading up on three different decentralized finance altcoins as a top wallet buys 17 million dollars worth of sushi now again remember the whales are generally pretty smart they don't always get it right and they're not always buying at the best price 
They're just buying in between. They buy low and they sell high. They don't have to buy the exact bottom and they definitely don't sell the exact top. No one is that good. Just keep that in mind. All right, so sushi, obviously a lot of sushi. What else was being bought? Ave. On average, the whales were buying 78 Ave, worth around 21,000. Now, they're also ramping up with Uniswap. So they are the three biggest DeFi plays that are getting bought up at the moment. Again, this isn't a clear-cut indication that Radio DeFi is about to pump, but I've been bringing you stories for a while about how DeFi has been down quite low. Uh, you know, it hasn't been the it thing, and now it is slowly starting to build up. Does that mean we're getting a, like a DeFi winter this time? I mean, it's summer in Australia, but they usually go by what's happening over the states. It's a DeFi winter and not a bear winter, like a, De a DeFi pump in the winter coming. Things are looking nice, but no guarantees in life. Now, some of the other things that are selling quite nice is Polygon Matic. So people are buying up that. The Sandbox, I did get a bit of that the other day, and Stable Coins. Again, you know, a lot of the DeFi will be using Stable Coins. I, I believe that Stable Coin regulation is coming. It's not too far away. And some of it's going to be really, really good. And some of it's going to be really, really bad, unfortunately. And some stable coins may simply disappear. We'll have to wait and see. I am a little bit worried about uh, USDT and also, what's the other one? I can't even think of Terra Terra Luna stable coin, UST. Uh, I know that the SEC have sent some documents to the creators of uh, Terra Luna. So we'll just have to wait and see again. We can go fingers crossed that they you know, come out with regulation that allows them to operate, obviously under, you know, some of the old rules and regulations, which we just have to accept, but as long as they don't just kind of crush the industry, because that won't be good. But in all fairness, I don't see that happening. I think any country that is heavy handed on crypto regulation, they'll simply get left behind in the end because they cannot ban it. They can make it really difficult, but eventually people will always find a way around it simply because the internet cannot be shut down. And that's plain and simple. With some kind of nuclear war or massive solar flare or something like that, that could do it. But outside of that, the internet's going not going anywhere and the internet would simply be rebuilt unless we had some, you know, earth extinction kind of event. And then, well, it doesn't matter what you've invested in then, does it? Because we're all in trouble. All right, look, that's it from me. So again, I'm just kind of keeping an eye out on Bitcoin at the moment, waiting to see what it's done. It's bounced off this kind of $46,000 level a few times. So is it simply getting ready to springboard up or dump down a level or just go sideways? My gut feeling is, you know, probably sideways, but if not sideways down, I don't think we're ready to spring up yet. But Bitcoin being Bitcoin and crypto being crypto, now that I've said that, it's probably going to do exactly that, spring up. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but hey, as long as we're not losing too much, and if you are on that gain train, congratulations to you because you're out you're outplaying the market, and I'll see you next time.